I know what it's like to be afraid. I know what it's like to face death. I know what it's like to die. I know what it's like to see the other side. And I know what it's like to come back. There are now an estimated 7 million people who tell stories of haunting similarity, of near-death experiences that begin when they seem to escape their bodies. Danny and Brinkley was struck by lightning. I rolled over. As I rolled over, I looked down and I saw myself lying across the bed. I saw my shoes. I saw the phone phone that knocked across the room. I'm watching this from almost a non-attached perspective. So, so you're, you're on the phone, the bolt of lightning hits you, and it kills you? Hits me in the neck. It goes in down California, thousands yeah. listened to Danny and Brinkley, that man whose heart stopped when struck by lightning in 1975. He's on a book tour. So you're still above, now you're above the I'm ambulance, and you're going with the ambulance, I'm, with your body? I'm watching them put me in well, the ambulance. I was talking on the phone, the lightning came down the phone line, entered my neck, it went through my spine, threw me up in the air, and there was this slight buzzing at the ear, and I felt myself pop out of the body. Then I felt myself float up to the ceiling, and the doctor and the nurse were in there, and he was looking at me, so she's gone. She's dead. I felt like I'd been hit by a train, but what had happened was I was talking on the phone, holding the telephone phone like this, the lightning came down the phone line, entered my neck. It went through my spine, threw me up in the air. As it threw me in the air, it knocked me out of my shoes and welded the nails and the heels of my shoes to the nails in the floor, which is how I was grounded and I didn't explode. I have the distinct memory of always trying to look at myself and thinking how much better looking I thought I was than that. Because this guy was ugly, he was in trouble, and he had these blue lines all down his face. Most of that was really hard for me because I've been such a self-centered jerk all my life. And I was happy, truly happy, to be away from that body. They could have it. And I did not feel one bit of remorse or sadness, no matter what had happened. Most of that was really hard for me because I've been such a self-centered jerk all my life. The next thing I remember is I heard a set of chimes. And as I looked at an angle, probably 40, 35 or 40 degrees, I could see a tunnel. The tunnel was like a spiral, like it was moving whether I was moving or not. Then I began to whisk down it. As I see the tunnel, I'm down. And I could hear these chimes. But I was in utter peace and utter tranquility. Most of that was really hard for me because I've been such a self-centered jerk all my life. And it was such a stark, dramatic difference between the way that body was and what was happening to that body and this place I was, this utter peace. As I moved closer to the light, I was kept being surrounded and filled with this love. This love of like, I can't describe it except when you haven't seen your parents in a long time. If you've been away from your family, and when you first see your mom and your dad, that feeling when you're a small kid, that feeling that you get, I knew I was safe, I knew everything was peaceful, and I knew it was right. As I came into the tunnel, came through the tunnel, I came into a place much like walking out of a dark room into a bright room, as if my eyes were trying to adjust to this brilliant light. I come into this place of brilliant, beautiful light, the contrast between the brilliant light of the lightning bolt and the brilliant light that was in the tunnel was another thing that was quite dramatic. Because this light was so brilliant and so bright, it passed through me, it permeated me. It, 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 it and I became one. Most of that was really hard for me because I've been such a self-centered jerk all my life. I had a panoramic view of my life. Every feeling, every thought, every action, every deed, all at the same time. Every encounter I'd ever had with any person I'd ever come in contact with, I had it. At the same time. And as it started happening, I began to see how I affected the person that I had the encounter with or the experience, whether it be me personally or whether it be someone else. And then how they were affected. How it was one step removed from us and how they were affected. Most of that was really hard for me because I've been such a self-centered jerk all my life. And believe me, 
There is nothing hidden in your life. People ask me, they say, Daniel, you were over there a couple of times, what about hell? I said, well, they didn't bring it up. My damn sure didn't. The next thing that I knew, I was floating over my body in the emergency room and they were working on me. Then they stopped working on me. They put a sheet over me. They filled out a piece of paper and they rolled me in a room. And I was lying in that room and I was hovering above myself, watching myself. Then I heard what would appear to be an elevator door open. And these two guys came in and they were getting ready to take me someplace. I later found out that that was probably the morgue. Then at that exact moment, I was inside a body again. It was on fire. It was in pain. I could not move. So I started blowing the sheet. And they jerked the sheet off, pushed me back into the emergency room, worked on me and stabilized me. And in the course of the next seven days, I was completely paralyzed. He tells them his near-death experience gave him psychic powers. To look at death. Psychic or not, his insights have become a New York Times bestseller and can clearly comfort the bereaved. No, I'm not saying Wait, hold on, stay with me. Stay with me. You lost too many people close to you. I can pick it up. I see two losses really fast in your life, and I see you going through it. They're there. I think the most important point about the death experience is that it is orderly. And the fact that small children, all the way to grown people, have similar experiences. And if people could understand that if they would pay more attention to each other and to care and have faith and hope in each other, we could also begin to believe and have faith and hope in the true nature of the love of God. And not God in a, in a religious value, but God in a spiritual value. And through love, all things are truly possible.